Hello, Kipsters. Today is Wednesday, March 24th, and we will be continuing our work in the percussion family. Yesterday, we saw the bass drum and the snare drum, a couple videos showcasing those two instruments. And Monday, we saw a few videos showcasing the marimba, the xylophone, the glockenspiel. Today, we're going to be diving into instruments such as the timpani, and we'll, we'll see what the next instrument is. But this is, first we, we call this the timpani, okay? The timpani, or kettle drums, are a musical instrument in the percussion family. It is a type of drum. They consist of skin called a head stretched over a large bowl traditionally made of copper. So as you can see there, you see the brown part, the bowl part of the bottom. That part is made of copper. And then on the top, you see that white part on the top there. That is the skin that is stretched over the large bowl. And it's stretched, stretched so tightly that when you hit it, it vibrates. Timpani evolved from military drums to become a staple of the classical or orchestra by the last third of the 18th century. Today, they are used in many types of musical ensembles, including concert bands, marching bands, orchestras, and even in some rock groups. The cool thing about the, the timpani is it is one of the only pitched instruments. So you see those little foot pedals in the picture? If you look at the picture there, if you look at the Nearpod, you'll see that there's a little silver thing on the bottom there, and that is a foot pedal. Now the foot pedal, it tightens and loosens the head of the drum so that you can get a specific sound when you hit it. Hopefully we can see a couple videos of that happening. Hi, my name is Eric Ripple. I'm the principal timpanist of the Minnesota Orchestra. I started playing music when I was very young because my parents are musicians, but it was difficult for them because I was not very interested in music. As a good Minnesotan, I was more interested in hockey. But that all changed once I started playing drums and once I discovered classical music. I was particularly interested in the timpani and the unique role it plays as it participates in the orchestra. So the timpani are a collection of drums. The biggest one is the lower range of the instrument. And then as you get smaller with the instruments, the pitch goes higher. You produce the sound by using a mallet and striking the instrument. has a lot of ring, so sometimes we have to muffle the sound with our hands to stop the ring. The timpani are also a tuned drum. They have pitch, and how the pitch is changed is by these pedals down here. The pedals change the pitch by moving up and down. If you move up, the pitch goes higher, it tightens the head, raises the pitch. If you go down with the pedal, it lowers the tension of the head and lowers the pitch. You can, I can demonstrate that for you by doing what we call a glissando, going from low to high with the pedal. So another interesting thing about the timpani is that there are all sorts of mallets you can use to get different effects. So bamboo made mallets, they have a certain effect with a core in the middle and felt on top. These are wooden mallets, hornwood specifically, small, and they're used for much earlier music, 18th, 17th century music. They have a much different effect. And these are carbon fiber mallets. And these are huge mallets with lots of felt on top. They get a very different effect. So if you want to be more accurate, more precise with your intonation, you can make slight changes with this T-rod we call, and it makes very slight changes to the intonation. So I'll try to demonstrate that. One way we keep track of what specific pitch we're playing is the tuning gauges here. There are little indentations that mark the pitch G, for instance, A, and we try
try to trust that that is accurate and use it as a gauge to see where our pitch is. So we use a technique sometimes called a roll, which is many alternating strokes, but very fast to represent a hum or a sustained note like you would hear on a violin or a brass instrument. There are many varieties of rolls. They can be very quick. They obviously can be very loud, but they can be very slow. I love the multiplicity of rolls the timpani can play. In this next excerpt, I start with a driving jagged rhythm, and then I move to a driving soft rhythm that kind of propels the orchestra forward. And then I play the melody, which will be demonstrated by the pedals. And then at the end of the excerpt, the timpani has the opportunity to send the climax of the whole section over the top. And this is from Samuel Barber's Medea's Dance of Vengeance. is a great honor. We get to share some of the greatest music ever written with our audience. It's very important to carry out this art form and keep serving it to our audience. Thank you for watching this video and being curious enough to learn about the orchestra instruments. And I hope to see you at a, perform hope to see you at a performance at Orchestra Hall. Awesome. And our next instruments we're going to be exploring are the hand drums, okay? The hand drum is any type of drum that is typically played with the bare hand rather than a stick, mallet, or hammer, or any other type of beater. The simplest type of hand drum is the frame drum, which consists of a shallow cylindrical shell with a drum head attached to one of the open ends. Other common drums in this group are djembes, bongos, dumbeks, and congas. And we're going to see a couple of djembes, bongos, and congas here. and the djembe. If you look closely, you see the conga is a little taller, djembe, and this time it's a little shorter. The tension on the skin is achieved by the pulling with these metal rods. The djembe is with the rope, okay? The base that comes out of this small bottom is played here. Your bass. My tone is played here. My tone is right here. My slap has an advance from the tone area to the slap area like this. More center. So my slap don't go to center, my slap stay in the drum. So, my slap is like this. Wow, I hope everybody caught that. We're gonna play a little bit for you to show you the color and sound of this wonderful instrument playing with another wonderful instrument, the conga and the djembe.
heard the difference in sound, but there's really not that many differences. And you can appreciate the differences in both instruments, the conga and the djembe. Yeah, so as you could hear, like he was saying, there are not very many differences, but the, the differences are enough to make these two instruments um, separable for sure. This is the bongos. And you can see there the bongos different than the djembe and the and the conga because it has two drum heads instead of just one for the entire instrument. And there's a lot of cool hand things that he did with that. You could also do that on the djembe as well. You saw he was rubbing his hand against it, making the like vibrating type sound. I'm sure you could also do that on the conga as well. Another instrument we have here, a video of a drummer playing a hand. I believe this is a hand drum is what they call this very cool instrument here
cool. No, you can watch the rest of that video if you want, but it's, it ends basically very similarly. But it is considered a hand drum, and why is that? Of course, because he plays with his hand. Now, some of them are pitched like that. Some of them are made of steel. And you'll see if you've ever looked up steel drums or if you've ever seen a steel drum, they sound a lot like that. Very um, Trinidad and Tobago, very Cuban, nice little, you know, steel, um, ska feel. Um, so, yeah, very cool instrument there. Um, popular, very popular video. Um, I've never seen that instrument before in real life, but I enjoyed watching that video when I first came across it. Poll for you guys. Quick question before we end this video today. Which instrument did you find the most interesting? So we we, we only saw three, we saw four videos of four different instruments, but we only, I want you to focus on the three that we actually talked about, the conga. Remember, the conga was the, the longer one that the guy was playing on the right side of the video, and he was saying how the top of it is secured by metal, be metal bars that makes the head a little bit more tight. We had the bongo, which was the two drums, the two tiny drums right next to each other. And then the djembe, which is the um, more African drum. And that one is held together by ropes rather than metal. So of, of those three, which one did you or do you find the most interesting? Actually have. Um, so when we when we were over break, I did a donor's shoes. And in our music class, I got us a bunch of bongos or sorry, djembe. So I'm going to show you one of those, what they look like. So I have this djembe here, and I have about 28 of these. Um, but when we do potentially come back in person, we will be spending time with these djembe's. And as you can see, this djembe too, also secured by rope, although less secured by rope than that one was. That one was like actually secured by rope. There's some glue on this as well, but and you can hear the different tones it has. If you play close to the edge, it sounds like this. If you play in the middle, the bass hit sounds like this. slap that sounds like this so very cool very different things you can do with that instrument i'm really looking forward to playing those with you guys when we do if you have a favorite instrument i do i'm going to say djembe on this one um, and i'm going to submit and that will be the end of that video as always mr isaac has three things for you you are kind you are smart you are important i look forward to the day that we can make music together again until then guys have an awesome evening and i will see you tomorrow